This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The Pippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hip Ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Show a consultant standing by. Profile this is coming up in minutes. <laughs> Fire! Sorry. Hey, we got your uh, headlines on the way one hour from now, but first, quick check into Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Yeah. All right, some hackers in Vietnam say that they've cracked the new iPhone's face ID with just a $150 mask. Huh, but experts damn. are skeptical. Yeah, well, of course they're going to say they're skeptical. They're every, you know, you can't break it, you can't encrypt it. I feel like if you throw a challenge out there, See, no hacker can hack into... Like, count on the fact that they're all going to make the effort, and then they're going to do it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, my God, once you say this is unbreakable, or it cannot be done, or anything like that with Unsingable. technology... Right. Did we learn nothing from the Titanic? Just don't say anything. It's like the same rule you have in the car, right? You've been on a long trip. You just want to get home. And now you have to go through a very developed part. There's nothing but traffic lights, and somehow you're getting every green light. It's a silent agreement that no one says, hey, I can't believe we're getting all the green lights, right? Mm-hmm. It should be the same thing in the IT world. Don't say it. Don't I say just, it. I can't understand how a mask could could break the face ID, how, how a mask could actually register positive for every face on the planet. Mike, I know so little about the IT world. Like, to me, things either work or they don't, and I don't understand any of the semantics to go through, but I believe anything can be done on either side of it. Maybe. You know, I mean, look, what, Equifax gets breached, everyone gets breached. I just feel like whatever you've got, there's a loophole in there. I mean, even the dragon has the soft spot, right? That's always the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would just, I would think that if they were going to crack it, there would be a code, not a mask. That's... You Maybe know. that's their point, though. Like, hey, we tried to do this code thing, and you guys are right. The way you wrote your code, it's, it's the, they'll eventually crack it. But we found a faster way, which is we put on a mask as a joke, and guess what? It just got, bugs uh, me that it's a mask they bought. I thought they made the mask. Here's the truth of the oh. matter. I've got uh, one of my programs for my photos has facial identification software in it. Mm-hmm. And it will put certain individuals into certain photos into a file that all has their their, their, their face on it. Mm-hmm. All right. If I open up one of these files, like let's just say I open up my daughter's, well, there'll be friends of, you know, like a mine that I've like different women in there. So even though this oh, is so supposed it looks to be similar. Oh yeah. Right. Even though it's supposed to be pictures of my daughter, sometimes it's not. It might be my my other daughter's friend yeah. in a picture with her and then that's identified as my daughter. It's just like so trust it's me, it's not perfect by any stretch. Yeah. Well, there you go, Mike. All right. A driver in Massachusetts was busted for driving with a license plate made out of a pizza box and a magic marker. Did you see it? No. It, it's it's better than I thought it would be, but it's still so pathetic. So I imagine like the brown cardboard pizza box. Sure. They did at least use a white pizza box. Oh, and none God. of the pizza logo was showing. But there's a few things. It's in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts is hard to spell. <laughs> but if <laughs> you have a mass... spell it wrong. No, you just spell it wrong. They gave up. It just says mass. <laughs> oh, Lord. The, it, oh, boy. That's one. And then, you know, on any license plate, when you look at the number two, like when you write the number two, some people kind of do the hoop on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Well, on license, license plate. It's, yeah. Right, it's like a typewriter too. So this dude did two loops for the twos. It says mass, and it doesn't look like a pizza box, but it does not look like a license plate. Dang, man. It man. didn't even make an effort. It's uh, cardboard and magic marker. I want to know how long he survived on it, though. I'm saying that was the second day. I mean, a couple days, day Mike, it's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. <laughs> He's here for you. A Chipotle <laughs> worker in New York recognized a customer as the guy who'd robbed her uh, robbed her house six months ago. Oh, damn. And now the police have his picture, and they're looking for him. See? That's what happens. Damn. You're going right? to rob stuff. Don't go out so much. I, look, not only that, but, I mean, if that's your game, it just seems any more that every person out there seems to have some type of monitoring device in their home. Some yeah. type of camera system, something like that. So, I, you know, I think that game is changing a little bit for people. At least wear a mask. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, man. Respect the game. Yeah. So wouldn't you think that authorities would have a picture of him from the robbery, though? They might. I mean, they might. But the thing is, now she can match it up and say, mm-hmm. this is the guy. Maybe he paid with a credit card. I mean, who knows? Oh, there you go. True enough. Same jacket. Something. True enough. <laughs> or is her jacket. <laughs> Two sets of police officers in Detroit wound up brawling with each other after an undercover operation went completely wrong. I understand. I didn't read the whole story. My understanding is that 
The cops who are there to make a bust get in a fight with each other. Yep. The homeowner who's there to be busted, like, just stood by and watched, like, fellas. Two but, different two different authorities uh, yeah. were working on this one case. And got into a fist. Two different they, precincts. And they yeah. ended up getting there at the exact same time. They did the exact same thing drug dealers did. They got into a turf war. They did. Over whose uh, who's bust who's that was going to be bigger. Right. Exactly. And meanwhile, the homeowner's like, cool. I'm running one away. Those, one of those cops went to the hospital because another cop put him in the hospital. You think they press charges? Yeah. <laughs> right? No. I mean, you know about the thin blue line, and I get it. If I'm not a cop, I want to press charges. But if it's cop on cop, and it's a big, you know, penis size competition they got going on. I'm thinking if you're a cop, knowing as much as you do about the paperwork, the court system, I'd be like, it's all you. that crap. Like, look, dude. All I, you, bro. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. Let's, just, let's just call it a day and go home. <laughs> I'd be like, you, you got this. Uh, right? Yeah, exactly. You got to go yeah, to you court. Gotta you got to fill out paperwork. No big deal. I'm not saying I'm lazy, but I'm lazy. Right. Do you think this is the first time that those two precincts have gone at each other? Uh, obviously, there's got to be some tension not. there, right? There's got to be some sort of a build up there. Well, also too, like you got to keep in mind the area they're in. They're working narcotics and this and that. Like I was telling, like, like that's just a thin line between cop and criminal. Right. So yeah. after a while, you work that many cases and you work with the that kind of criminal element. I think you start taking some of that persona on. Mm-hmm. How could you not, man? Everyone yeah. you deal with is basically a jackass, right? There's so, not man. that much crime in Detroit, is there? <laughs> not a ton. <laughs> A man. By the way, I have to say, the one I witnessed, he was like, they, they should communicate better. <laughs> I was thinking about this. You got drug dealers going, man, you guys, seriously. Like, I know what the communication was. We got him. You all stay home. We got this one. And it was repeated on the other side as well. If I'm the drug dealer, I'm like, hey, you guys take as long as you need to sort this out. <laughs> Just, you know what? Give it some time. A man tried to hunt for a natural gas leak. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ted, have you heard this one? No, I'm just assuming if you're telling me he used a lighter. <laughs> he used a match. <laughs> to, he used a match for light, and oh, uh, no. what do you know? He wound up in the hospital with burns. <laughs> yeah, it ended exactly the way it should have ended. <laughs> God. <laughs> gotta Mike. find this gas leak. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, he found it, Mike. I can smell it. <laughs> Uh, Losing a pet is as painful emotionally as a divorce and even worse than being fired or having a friend move, according to a new survey. It's worse than a divorce. It's a death. A divorce is something that you have chosen to do. The death of your pet, unless you killed it, is not something that... There's there's a reason why people relate pets to family members is because, at least with a friend, friends go home after a while. You know, you don't have to spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a friend, but a pet is with you all the time, so it really is a family member. It is. So you're losing a family member there. Did your cat poop or pee in the house last night? Yes. <laughs> Both? Both. Did you I'm, not clean the litter box out? I, I did. Was it dirty? No. Okay, I don't know what happened then. Yeah, cat doesn't like it. Where, I, where, where, did he, where did he poop? She was she pooed on the on the bed. She pooped oh. on your bed. Where did she pee? Ah, she, she peed did. on the bed. Ah! Oh. But she did. I think there was some confusion there. No, there, no, no there was there, not. Th- we had a dog over on the weekend. She, yeah. was, she was meeting my girlfriend's dog. Uh huh. And uh-huh. I think it kind of twisted her up a little bit, and and I moved her litter box into my bedroom for the weekend there, so she could have her own little safe haven. Yeah, she's but then I moved now. it back after the dog went home, and then and I think it just confused her. I think she was like, "I okay, this is where I pee now," and then she was like, "Wait a minute, where's my box?" Mike, she was mad at you. <laughs> yeah, she might have been mad. <laughs> right? She was yeah, not. Me. She's like, "F you." You brought chaos into the home. Yeah, Dad, I guess. That's it. Damn it. Here's and, my stool. Finally. <laughs> but she she looked remorseful for it. She, she wasn't. She, she wasn't. mewed. She mewed like, I'm sorry. Moving She's on. laughing to her cat friends not going, he thinks I feel bad. And police in Manchester found a man accused of DUI in an interesting location. I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are on the way one hour from now. First, the game is... Uh... The Men's Room presents... Profile This. Hey, it's Steve Thrill Hill. Can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. This is a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Kaylee. Welcome to The Men's Room. Hola! All right, Kaylee, you Hola. understand how this here game is played? Yeah. All right, here's your story. This is a real uplifting one. A man tried to escape after being locked in a bedroom to await police by the alleged victim's parents. So a man fell to his death as he attempted to escape through a fourth-story window after he was caught molesting a six-year-old boy. 
Now, the man had been locked in the bedroom in his New York flat, as they say, by the boy's parents, who said they caught him abusing their son at a kid's birthday party. Jesus. Yeah. So he's thought to have clambered out of the top floor window and jumped to escape before police arrived. Well, video footage shows him plunging 40 feet and landing on a metal fence outside of the apartment in the Jackson Heights neighborhood of Queens. They say if he didn't have a filthy mind, he'd simply stay and face the situation. That's what the mother said. Clearly, not a lot of remorse. Now, the man is said to have uh, invited three children, including the boy and the five-year-old female cousin, into his room to watch a film during the party. At one point, the girl left the room acting strangely, as it was reported. Her mother later looked into the room and saw the guy molesting the boy. Uh, basically, the fathers of the children attending the party, they began beating the guy up before the victim's mother intervened and said, look, you can't kill him the way that you deserve to kill him, but let's lock him in the bedroom until the cops get here. And then dude decided to escape, and he did escape, but he also died. The question is, do you believe that this guy who decided to take the children's birthday party a wee bit too far is black, white, Mexi, or Jew? Uh, you sound I'm like you're meditating. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to, you know, get the answer in my head. I'm kind of stuck between white and Mexi. It's New York. It, 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 it's, yeah, it's Queens. It, so you got it, everything. It could right? be anybody. Yeah, that's like every single. What do you think, Tim? Uh, I mean, the only thing I'll say this is it's in a it's in a neighborhood that ends in Heights. Yeah. And there was a small, what I'm guessing, old school metal fence. That, that's what I'm guessing. Because like it says a chain link. Fence? It's in Queens. You've seen Queens. There, yeah. No one has a lot of space in New York City, so it's Queens. It's a birthday party. Friends and family are there. He jumps out of the fourth story window, and I'm assuming it's one of those old school metal fences, just because it's Queens. Yeah, I mean, just the fact that the neighborhood is called Heights and it's got that old school chain link fence. I think I'm leaning black. Have to just go on my own and say Mexi. Final answer. Yeah, Mexi. Mexican. Okay. We'll find out if he was black, white, Mexi, or Jewish next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. <laughs> Profile this takes us in New York. And a guy doing uh, not so uh, appropriate things to children. At a birthday party. Fortunately, he was caught by some adults who were there. Yep, the fathers. And they beat his ass real good. And then they locked him in a closet because they wanted him to stay there. And so they called the cops and and just they wanted to haul his ass out of there. Well, he apparently broke out of the bedroom through a window and decided to just make a go at it. And he ended up either jumping or falling four floors to his death. Yeah, he ended up achieving what the fathers were looking to do. But Kaylee, we asked you, did you believe that this son of a bitch is black? White, Mexi, or Jew, and I you went with your gut, man, and you you went Mexi. Yeah. Oh, you are correct. Oh. Congratulations. Does she feel good about yeah, that I don't or know. Sure not? Yeah. Either way, you win nothing. All right. Now for all the TV news, all the time, and it's time for TV time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, I'm again. the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah. So Jimmy uh, Jimmy Kimmel is pretty famous for uh, having people read mean tweets. Mm-hmm. Sure. Now, Jimmy Kimmel is also turning uh, 50 years old. Kind of a historic, not historic, but that's a it milestone. It is for you. <laughs> if you yeah. Tur- yeah, you feel good. About- well, yeah, you should. But- and I like getting old. The alternative is dead. Yeah. So shut up. Christ almighty. Yeah, and I think even uh, even people like us that aren't huge birthday people. Yeah. yeah ironically. Uh, right, like, I do agree. Like, if it's your 21st birthday, your 30th, your 40th, your 50th. Yeah, like, go on the 10th yeah, after that. Yeah, right? yeah sure. have some fun. It's all decade. You've achieved something, you know? Halfway there, 45, 35, 25. It's just, you know, it's just like you haven't even really acknowledged the fact that you're 20 yet. You're 30 yet. You know, right, you're right. still like in the in the younger 30s and you realize, oh, man, it's halfway over. Yeah, you're right. Like 35, like whatever. It's just like, all right, I'm in my mid 30s. That's now. why these, the, it's died off a little bit. But man, I'm telling you what, three or four years ago, there was a time where people were like, it's my 27th birthday. I'm celebrating Don't all care. month. Like, no Don't one cares. Don't care. No one yeah, cares. I do think it's a younger person's game, though, too. I think people in their 20s are going to be more fired up. 
Yeah, sure. Think about still it, having a good time. Think about it like a reunion. There's a reason that you don't get together with people every single year who you knew 25 mm-hmm. years ago. You get with them like at a high school, like in your 10 year, in your 20 year, your 30. You let a decade go by, and then you have a good time seeing them again. And then you start attending funerals, right? And then it seems like those decades really get really close together, and all of a sudden you're like, I just came to this. Oh my God, it's now the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, the older you get, the faster it goes, right? That's it. That is very true. So, Jimmy Kimmel, a uh, very funny bit. He always has uh, people read uh, mean tweets about themselves, whether it's athletes or uh, country music stars, any of that kind of stuff. So now, what you're, gonna, what you're going to listen to is just people reading mean Jimmy tweets Jimmy. about Jimmy Kimmel <laughs> himself. And uh, you got to bear with me here a little bit. I'm doing some old school stuff running a board here, and I keep forgetting. You did to turn a good on. job today, man. I, but, well, I keep forgetting to turn on the buttons when I have to do my stuff. That is very important. Well, but part you're also of running, running the every, board. You're also it is running it is. everything else. Well, it's like, like I've been flown a plane in a while, and I keep forgetting to pull the yoke, folks. Well, I had this whole setup there. I said what you're about to listen to, and as I leaned over to hit it, I was like, "And that goddamn pot isn't on." <laughs> <laughs> like, which, uh, no, I feel you, man. It's worthless. Here you go. At Jimmy Kimmel. You represent everything I hate about myself, you bloated douchebag. I don't know how I got roped into this bit, but here we go. Here you go for your birthday, Jimmy. Some named at euphoric underscore mania writes, is Jimmy Kimmel cross-eyed or just ridiculously ugly? (laughs) The stupidest, stupid, stupid. Jimmy Kimmel, go suck a gorilla you dumb fat ass. <laughs> you got some haters. At Jimmy Kimmel, are you kidding me with that flabby body? Get to the gym, man. Do you really shave your pits? Scary. Jimmy Kimmel is that same fat kid from Win Ben Stein's Money who grew up to become that fat kid from Win Ben Stein's Money. I disagree. I think Jimmy Kimmel looks like a slightly bloated Carson Daly but not as funny. This is going to sound fantastic, but I forgot Jimmy Kimmel's name. So I googled ugly late night shows and I got him top bleak. Now, obviously, as you can tell there, there's some famous people reading the mean tweets to him. The last Howard one that, Stern there. Howard Stern was in there. Larry David was the last one. Uh, we put the video up at the Mention Facebook page. Check it out, because, I mean, Larry David can barely keep it together. It's pretty funny. But, I mean, all those people. Kristen Bell was in there. Uh, Anthony Anderson. So and and in Kimmel's uh, episode, kind of there were some birthday surprises and this and that. It, it was pretty good. And like we said, fifties a giant monster one. So you got to celebrate that. At in uh, in Jimmy Kimmel's defense, all the fat jokes that were being thrown his way. To me, he looks as good as he's ever looked. He looks slim. He looks like he's in shape. But is that a compliment? Well, I think. And I'm, he, I, no, I, think, I, I don't I think, know. No, I think he looks good. I, I really don't. No, think I think that, that's part of the jokes, though. Is that right? He's in the best shape of his life now. Okay. okay yeah. I kind of yeah. thought, like, why are people bashing on his weight? I mean, Dude, how, how far do you got to go back on this? People thing? bash everything. Yeah, they, I mean, you I'll go through me, I'm on I got it's like, it's all right, dude. Just, it's like, whatever. You're fine. I'm fine. You're fine. Yeah, he used to be, right, back in the day, he had a little chub on him. So now, <laughs> so now. <laughs> <laughs> back to the micro piece. Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> uh, so, right, they're just giving him hell about that. Plus, also, like, sometimes with Jimmy Kimmel, even for somebody like me, who's obviously a TV expert, I just forget how many damn shows he's been on. Like I, I forgot about Win Ben Stein's money, like the was Man he, Show. Um, yeah, I remember was, the Man Show. I remember on Win Ben Stein's money, he was like the guy on the side, the kind of he was like the sidekick or whatever. He's been hustling to give that guy. I want to say he started in radio with Corolla, right? Jesus Christ, dude! Yes. The, the story is famous. There was a guy in Seattle, all right, okay, and he was, I, I guess, he was the program director at KZOK. Okay, I think that's the station that Kimmel was on, and so, uh, so Kimmel was on doing a night show there. And he was on for however many months he was on. And the guy who was the program director fires Kimmel and says he doesn't get his show. He doesn't understand it. He, he can't figure it out. Like, this is the dumbest thing. He's, sound familiar? Yeah, so, I was going to say, I've so, been they, there. so he fires Kimmel. And Kimmel then goes back down to L.A. and then ends up doing radio, uh, continues to do radio, then, uh, then gets on the man show. And then all this stuff blows up. And the reason it blew up is because some idiot in Seattle fired his ass. And he went back to L.A. So this guy is known as the ja- in Seattle as the jackass mm. that fired Jimmy Kimmel. But really, what he did was he kind of helped start launch his career by him having to move back to L.A. Sure, I mean you don't know yeah. that at the time, but yeah, 
Yeah, it is kind of crazy. But yeah, but, I mean, but Kimmel's been hustling. You're trying to judge someone based on their talent. So that means that they have potential talent, they have future talent. It's like somebody who's going to draft a 17-year-old kid playing high school baseball. Yeah, but you can't you're, take it you're, personally. You're, you're, no, you but you're know how these you're, guys yeah, are. Yeah, but your assumption is, is that, you know what I mean, like, I'm banking on this guy based on his abilities. So the reason that it's such a slam is because, like, he was putting on a pretty good radio show. This guy just couldn't judge talent. So yeah, but job, okay. yeah, but everybody, yeah, but everybody, like, look at any GM or whatever. Even, even the best ja- uh, talent, talent judges, even the best people that have those jobs, like, you're always going to miss on a few. Sure, they you know what I mean? they miss on a few, and sometimes and we've I all. Mean, had, Michael but, Jordan was yeah. not the number one pick. Yeah, think no, about that. No, no, you're right. We've, we've all, all had, had that experience Bowie. where you're mm-hmm. sitting in a room and you know you're the smartest guy in the room, not because you're smart, but because the people you're talking to are stupid, and there might be an authority. And and my thought is always this. <laughs> Without them being aware, you can manipulate them into doing exactly what it is you need to do to help yourself out. You go like, okay, dummy, Mm -hmm. no worries, I'm not even going to sweat this. And then the next day you get them to do what you want them to do with them thinking it's their idea. That's basically the the, the crux of it. It's got to come from them. Right. That is, as long as they think they came up with the idea, you are good to go, right? Yeah. Isn't that true? Man, play to someone's ego and you got them in their hands. Well, hey, trust me, Miles, I'm with you. I think, obviously, in retrospect, that looks kind of foolish. But I also think, eh. He didn't know it. You're going right, to be hit or miss. And, and, I don't know. We know how this industry works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, we've been fired a couple times, and we are not on late night TV. So right no, now, and that's the difference. They're looking pretty <laughs> that's good. That's the difference. You it's know like, what I'm saying? It's like when he's you fall the to exception, that, I mean, man. I mean, like that's a I have been level. fired, and you're I have a, not You're one done of the most popular TV <laughs> show hosts on television right now. There's a different level there where you go, like, that guy doesn't have talent. It's different if you like like bust a local news guy and he gets a job in another town. All right, he's still good enough. There, there are lateral moves or nothing. But this is kind of a bigger deal than that. Yeah, and look, at the end of the day, the main person that won there was the guy at ABC, or woman, that said, oh, this guy seems crazy, let's give him a show. Mm-hmm. You know, And obviously he had done a lot of work to that. But remember when Kimmel started, like that show was a mess. They had a live bar on there. Oh, yeah. And like people were like, I want to see people didn't want it on the air anymore. Like, they had he, girls in bikinis just bouncing on trampolines for their bumper. Well, that was a man show. Oh, well, that's another right, one. Yeah, right. Yeah, ziggy, zaggy, ziggy, zaggy. Oi, oi, oi. Now that guy could drink some beers. All right, uh, so we, we've we talked about this a little bit. There's a, a player for the Boston Red Sox, right, named Mookie Betts. Black. <laughs> so we sent that in earlier. We're in a Mookie conversation. Now, uh, he's famous because he's also a very good bowler. Do you guys think of bowling as an exciting sport? To watch? No. You know, man, I've seen a couple videos. There was a guy who bowled three 300 games in a row, which is as good as you're going to see. Uh, but that's not the question. I don't think NASCAR is exciting to watch. If you show me the highlights on ESPN, they're going to show the explosions. They're going to show the fit. Then it is exciting. Bowling, if I said, like, begin, we don't know if anyone's going to bowl a perfect game. Are we going to sit here and watch it? Absolutely not. I, 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 watch, let, I watch a little bowling. I have I some examples it. for yeah. you. So let's just take a look at the uh, examples of the excitement level from him bowling and from his day job. So first, he's bowled a perfect game, right? Mm-hmm. Should be real fired up. Yeah, hell, hell yeah. Boston Red Sox outfielder Mookie Betts on the precipice of perfection. 300 game for Mookie Betts. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's a perfect game. Let's check in with his day job where he catches a ball to rob a home run. Davis hits one high and deep to right field. Back goes Betts at the wall. He leaps. Are you trying to tell me, Ted Smith, that the Boston Red Sox are a bigger thing than professional bowling? I just couldn't get over how boring that guy's call was. That was terrible. Sure Wait, like, if you're ever, game. right, if you're ever, right, like, sorry, like, there should be a little sorry, more excitement. It's a perfect game. God damn, man. Well, they do have all these broadcasters who just ran, like, can you do ping pong? Like, I'll give it a shot. But still, if you could tell me, like, hey, man, he had the, the perfect ping pong game, whatever that is. The setup would be Congratulations better. to whoever the hell it is, probably from China, had the perfect ping pong game. Yeah. I want to say uh, Taiwan is very good at uh, ping pong, too. Really? See, yeah. what the Asian... Co- if you watch these guys play, like, if we play ping pong, we are our hips are basically touching the table, right? And we've got to follow it. Maybe we do a little spin. I'm not going to be here. You watch, they back seven feet off the table, and they hit this ball like they're oh, playing yeah. tennis... 
And what blows my mind more than that, not that they hit it on the table still, but that the guy that, that's playing against them can still track where the ball is. And they'll, yeah. they'll volley for like 45 seconds. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Either way, here's the thing. This guy's a hell of an athlete. Yeah. Is bowling athletic? It, look, if you're I, good at it, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I think. You're not. I'm not. He is. But is it athletic? Look, if you were to run the Bobby table in the Fisher window. Bobby Fisher is not an athlete, but he can play some mean-ass chess. Look, if you were a uh, professional whatever, but but you were at the top of your game like he is. You're playing yeah. for the for the Red Sox, whatever level that is. Well, but it's baseball. But, but then you can go and you could win, like, a pool tournament or play in a professional pool tournament. Is it a sport? But the fact that you're good at both of those, because, one, you can't really devote the time to because your day job is being an outfielder for I the Red Sox. I hear you, but, like, there's so a guy that played for the Ravens who was a pretty good offensive lineman, and then in his spare time he was excellent with physics. But yeah. it doesn't make physics. It's like you're good at both of these things, and maybe you're good with coordination even, right? So with that, with bowling, pool, I get it. Your coordination, without a doubt. Baseball, certainly. But baseball, I still call athletics. Pool and bowling, I would not. And I know people that, that play pool and bowling are going to get upset. I don't care about your argument. I'm saying I do not regard it as athletics. Sure. It's a game, for sure. Yeah, but if that you're good at it, you're, like, like if it would be like you were in the national chess tournament or whatever it but is. you're not like, an athlete. It's amazing to me that you're good at so many different things. Oh, no, I agree with you. But I also kind of agree a little bit with Thrill, too. Like, I just don't know if making, being a good bowler makes you a super athlete. I mean, he, he, look, he's a professional baseball player. Obviously, he's a that, super athlete. He's a good athlete, right. But one thing you like have to Deion understand about Sanders these things. Or Bo Jackson, like, they played football, but, well, there's no, you don't have to like the sport or even appreciate right. it. Why do I keep punching the mic? There's repetition That's of all of them. But, it, I know. I, actually, it's three. You missed one. Oh, but, uh, oh get out. <laughs> trust me. But, <laughs> but we recognize that it still takes athletic ability. We're bowling. Look, man, some of the best bowlers I've seen, like, there's not another sport they can play unless it's sumo wrestling. They're rolling that ball within an inch of going off the gutter, bringing it back, sure. throwing it into the All pocket. Right, what about this theory? If you could drink beer while doing it, like, it's not the same as, like, the other sports. So baseball, then, like the Mets, who won a World Series doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying that's not a sport because you're really not playing until the ball is in play. You but can go in the tire. Those guys don't do that anymore. They don't, but they did. But they did. That's what right. I mean. They won. <laughs> I mean, the World did. Series World drinking World beer, Series. <laughs> drinking Miller Lite beer like it, like they were going to stop making it at the end of the season if they didn't drink enough of it. <laughs> and they won the, the yeah. penultimate I mean, prize. Their pitchers are on coke. Their 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 offensive yeah, it was game. Yeah, the guy that threw is, the perfect is, is, game is, is, on absolute, acid. Absolutely, yeah, Doc. Uh, uh, yeah, Doc, Doc, Doc Ellis. Ellis. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, come on. Well, then again, the NBA. What eighty five percent of them are stoned to the bejesus. I believe when they walk out of the locker room. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot show. more of that that goes on than we think. Oh. Yeah, there was a one right, guy. Screw it, you're right. He's a supreme athlete. He can bowl a perfect game. Right, exactly, <laughs> supreme athlete. <laughs> I wouldn't want to try it, but. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, bowlers are weird too, man. You can not, play. I'm not saying bowlers are weird. It's always odd to me the people that are really good bowlers, because there's not a certain like. I think the stereotype is it's an old kind of chubby white dude. Sure, but like when I was a janitor and worked with all black dudes, they loved bowling. Like oh, that yeah. was the thing we did like Friday nights after work and stuff. So it's like bowling. You're right, is a sport that brings in a wide variety of people. I've like, never, I've never had a bad time bowling. Any, I don't do it regularly, but anytime you go, even I if have you're a not great time, even if you're not throwing the ball well and you're not having great scores, it's like you know what, you you had a good time because we're not good. I'm telling you, people that are good but not professionally good have the worst time bowling because they expect to do so much yep. better. You know, yep. it's like look, you guys play golf a bunch, right? And you guys are going to have a bad day based on what you believe you should be able to do because you've done it before, right? I'm pretty well proving that I can only do what I can do out there. But it, but that's not about it. It's about the experience. But how many people get upset? Golf clubs getting thrown and all this. It depends on Because you you're with. better. Like, I'm never going to throw a golf club because I suck. If I hit the ball and it goes in front of me, I'm like, hey, good enough. I'm not going to throw a golf club because it's going to go farther than my ball. And then that would be more embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I'm through the ball. That's right. Uh, Bill Murray. Everybody's a Bill Murray fan. Uh, do you, you know, is Brian... His brother, Brian Doyle Murray, uh, he was also, uh, back in the day, he was in, Ca- or he wrote Caddyshack. Uh, oh, did he? I did not know that. Yeah. and He, he was play- also the head of the caddy. Uh- right, he played Lou. Right. Okay, okay, all right. He was in Wayne's World. Gra- like, he's been in a few things. If you saw him, you'd recognize his brother besides just being Biggest Bill Murray's brother. brother. Right. But they have a show now, uh, Bill Murray and Brian Do- Doyle Murray's Extra Innings. And the I like the premise. It's very simple. Bill and Brian spent the summer visiting small town baseball communities and venues, and now basically we're just going to see what they got into. Okay, kind of weird though. We had heard about Facebook having TV shows and this and that. The only show I knew on Facebook so far right now was, was uh, the Lavar, like the Ball family, big ball, you know, big baller brand. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they have a show on Facebook, but I, I knew Facebook was getting into the TV stuff. But anyhow, the Bill Murray show is going to be on Facebook. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 look, everything's changing. You know, I mean, hell. Uh, Amazon's got television shows. Uh, it, it's just, it's, you know what? There's a lot more opportunity out there for people to for do. People, right. You're going to have to do creative there's, Yeah, there's, there's more Some chance for people to do their stuff. art. So I, that's, that's a cool thing. Uh, now, one thing. I think uh, Miles Thrill, I think we've all run into this. I know Mike has before, and I certainly have. Sometimes when you do any job like this in the entertainment business, uh, you write a joke or somebody writes a joke for you, you really like the joke. And you know this is going to be one of the jokes that just crushes that day, right? Mm-hmm. But you just, you can't quite get it out. You kind of stumble over it a little bit. So we go to my, one of my favorite guys, Seth Myers. It's a phenomenal joke, but Seth really struggles getting there. A man in Idaho known by authorities as the Sushi Bandit was recently arrested after multiple dine and dash incidents at Asian restaurants in the area. But he claims his innocent. <laughs> this joke is so good, I got excited. All right, you remember. Uh, dine and dash, Sushi Bandit. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. You guys remember, here we go. But he claims he's innocent. And said they'll sashimi in court. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's I a don't. Long way to home. Um, it is, but I don't know that I blame him because Shashimi and Court is so stupid, but I was like, that's a damn good show. It is pretty funny. Well, take it, Tan. We've got uh, your headlines on the way with Mike Hawk coming up in minutes. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Netflix admits that uh, 7% of people watching are also dropping a hoop snake. <laughs> Delivery, ri- <laughs> Delivery arrives at Space Station with delicious ice cream and pizza, a la take and bake. British doctor goes serving for first time in Australia and is immediately attacked by a great white shark. A man is busted for DUI. He runs home, jumps under the covers, and acts like he's sleeping like a lark. And a horse uh, kicks a car in Brazil. The police throw the horse in jail. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, our top story. We go to Manchester, where a man, na- man by the name of Mustafa Mboob was arrested and charged with DUI. Mboob? Mboob. Mboob? Mboob. Capital M, boob. <laughs> yeah. Mboob. Mboob. He was arrested and charged with DUI, but how things came together is where the story is. Police saw Mboob's car flying down the road with the car alarm blaring as it went by. Thinking that it was stolen, officers pursued the car all the way to its destination, which was his home, where he promptly ran out of the car and into the house. Officers followed him inside and found him under the covers, where he claimed that he had just been sleeping, despite being completely out of breath. An investigation of the car found that there was a breathalyzer ignition lock on the car that would sound the alarm and eventually shut the engine off if the driver failed the test. Police believe that he was just trying to beat the lock home and got caught. He did. I'd, he beat the lock home, and he got caught. That tells me that's not the first time he's done that. No, but that tells you that if you blow into something, and you, got you, you shouldn't be able to even drive, period. Yeah, my right. under, and I've known plenty of people that had to blow and go, man, and it was like, God, Mike, you know, honestly, years ago, okay? Mm-hmm. I am new into radio. This is one of my first, you're outside of the studio. This is the big NFL deal, okay? Okay. So they say, show up at the station, and for, I don't want to give her name. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> Salesperson, I'm very familiar with. Um, she's going to give you a ride to this place. I'm already nervous. Whatever. I show up at the station. There she is. She has all this crap that I have to do. And keep in mind, I'm real new, man, so I don't quite know. And we get into her car. She says where it is. And she says, hey, hey you got to do me a favor. I'm like, what's that? Can you blow into my uh, <laughs> my car? And I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? So she explains she got into DUIs to blow and go. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I went on got effed up last night. And I'm like, oh, my God. You have learned nothing. So here I am. And, and keep in mind, I couldn't blow into it either. Uh-oh. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. see, I don't have a DUI. So I went out and got drunk last night, still drunk this morning. We had to find a third person to go to this woman's car to blow into the thing for it to start. Damn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She looked like Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> she really did. Is that why you're not going to say her name? Uh, yeah, I just it doesn't. I don't think she shared this info with a lot of people. I and you. I kept it fairly under wraps when I was working there. But I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus, man. Around the world, it turns out that Netflix is a great distraction from a lot of the less eventful moments throughout the day. New statistics show that 26% of people have streamed while at work. 17% have missed their bus stop because of uh, by being distracted of Netflix. 45% of people have caught someone else watching what they're watching over their shoulder. 
27% have had, uh, have had people interrupt their streaming to ask what they're watching, and 7% have streamed while on the toilet. Yes, because most people... Okay. I don't know about you. When I'm on the toilet, and look, I didn't grow up in the era of having a cell phone or having the convenience of, of mm-hmm. bringing yourself with me, so to me, taking a dump would be what a Buddhist monk feels like meditating is. This moment is, for me, I am contemplative. I think mm-hmm. about many other things, but I've never... I've never looked at my phone like while I'm pooping. Right. Or watched a show. I'm so not like, a show. Like, if I'm on a plane, absolutely. You know, like, I have nothing Entirely else to do. Entirely different. Right. But, you no, know, I can pause this and sit on my couch and watch this later, right? I don't have to be pooping. Like, when I poop, to me, it's my zen zone. What, what, what show is that great where I can't even take a poop without watching it? Breaking Bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mike is you right You know what, there. Mike? I haven't seen it. You might be right. <laughs> like, I don't watch TV, but I read my phone all the time on the toilet. Yeah, I'm with you. But you're not watching TV, though. Right. You know? Now, yeah. but if it was a sports game, I wouldn't be against it. I was going to say, if it's a sports game and I just couldn't hold it and it's getting to that moment, then sure. I mean, it's even a joke. There are things that you can find on Facebook that say, okay, stop scrolling and wipe. I mean, <laughs> people scroll when they're on Facebook and it's already taking up too much time. If you're spending a half hour watching a TV show or even worse, an hour on You're going to have toilet, a dry butthole. Yes, right. I'll tell you that right now. Around your ass. When you, when you sit on the toilet so long that when you wipe, it's too dry for anything to ah. show up, right? You've been there too long, You need to man. wet the toilet mm-hmm. paper. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't have to wet the toilet paper. <laughs> In Brazil, a man was so incensed that a horse had kicked and damaged his car that he demanded that the horse be locked up. Well, he got exactly what he wanted, and we've got the photos to prove it. Authorities actually took the horse into the jail and locked it in a cell. And then what? The horse didn't learn a lesson. The horse right? did what horses do. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's basically a pen. You, you've accomplished nothing. And to that man, I asked, do you feel better now? The horse you, went to jail. Do, do you, you think feel the horse, better? Did the horse learn its lesson? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it did. Most horses, horse, have you ever seen a horse pen? The only difference between that is a jail cell is that there's straw on the floor. I'm sorry. It's, a, just, it's got bars. It's a pen. It's like when your parents sent you to your room, but in your room you had like a TV, a computer. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, Girlfriend. Oh, okay. Pizza oven. Right. Like, sure. Time out doesn't house work too arrest. well. House arrest. Beer keg. Yeah, people under house arrest. It's so unfair. You're home. For this next story, we go where we haven't gone before. Space. A commercial space. supply ship has finally arrived at the International Space Station two days after launching from Virginia. The capsule carries chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Make your own flatbread pizzas, enough for all the crew, along with some needed equipment. Oh, and they are loving life up there. I like no, how they do that. that. Along with some needed equipment. Sure. <laughs> no, the only thing they're <laughs> thinking about is that trip. pizza and ice cream. Trust it's me. that Italian dude. Seriously, the Italian dude on the space station. Pablo or whatever. Yeah, he's like, dude, I need pizza. Oh, yeah. Hey, give me some pizzas up here. It even says in here, what does it say? I need five pairs of slacks, pizzas. <laughs> he's wearing slacks in space. I got slacks in space. That's it for headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the turn of Who Sucks Less? Slacks, Something slacks, else that we'll figure out tomorrow and profile this. Yeah, everything Miles said, absolutely really true. true. We have no idea. So until tomorrow, please do what the hell you do best, bitches. And until then, for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful.